My name is Fernando. Um, my goal here is actually to teach you a little bit more about Vitex.io and to help you go through a lot of the steps to finally build an e-commerce website. And um, yeah, in this first tutorial, we're gonna just see how we can develop a very basic website using one of the templates provided by uh, Vitex called Storchi. And I'm gonna go through all the steps that you needed in order to make your website run. Um, please just consider that in order to develop anything using the technology of Vitex, you will need an account, a Vitex account, and you will need also a Git in your machine and a Vitex tool belt also installed there. So I will send you the links. I will have the links here on the description and you can go through them, all the steps to see how you can actually get into this point where I'm starting now. So the first thing I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go to my terminal and here, I will just create a new folder called Vitex Tutorial. And here I'm gonna go inside of this folder and open my VS Code using it. So let's move here. There's a second. Um, I think it didn't open the one I want. So hold on for a second. Let me try it again. Okay, now yes, we have it here. Great. So let's open the terminal of, v of uh, VS Code now. And the first step that we need actually is to log in in your account, in a Vitex account. So I will use our my company account now, the code by one. So I just need to do a Vitex login, the name, in, the name of your uh, Vitex account. So we have here a redirection directly to the browser where he asked me my credentials just to confirm that I, I have the rights to um, use this account. So everything is confirmed. Let's go back. And now it's very important that you understand also the concepts of workspaces. So we have different workspaces uh, types. We have a development workspace, we have production workspace, and I have a master workspace. Um, we will have also other videos explaining that. I'm not gonna go into this topic right now because otherwise it will be too long. But um, I will use for this tutorial a uh, workspace, a normal, well, development workspace that is called, well, first of all, very important, always use this comment from Vitex. Here you are sure that you're using the right workspace in the right account. So right now, now as you can see, I'm in the production workspace master here. so. I don't want to work on that because it's kind of dangerous. So let's move to the text use tutorial workspace. Here, he will check if there is any existing um, workspace. If there is not, he will create it. In this case, I already have this uh, workspace, so he just switched to this new one. Um, and yeah, so we're gonna work this uh, workspace for now. Um, the next step you need to do in order to um, well, work in this project. Um, you need to look for the Vitex store team, store team uh, GitHub. And here you will have, well, what we want to achieve in the end of the day, right? We want to achieve this um, concept here, this um, layout. And we're gonna see also some more details, things that are very important when you start. Um, so let's let's go ahead and clone this this repository. So let's use our git clone. And now we have our folder over here. So in order to start working with the text, we also need to be inside of the folder that contains the manifests.json. So let's move ahead there. Mm, store dot and now here I can start finally working with my uh, project. So the next step I want to do is actually to use this uh, workspace because right now, if I go to the link where I have this, this um, workspace, you see there is not much there because there is nothing linking to this workspace. So what do we need? We need to link all this uh, content here with our workspace. And in order to do that, you need to use a command that's called vitex link. 
very important. Um, it's not ready yet. So you have to read very often what are these errors saying here. So for example, now we have an error saying that the following peer dependence should be installed. So this one here, we will need to install now in order to make our link, well, almost ready to work. So we're gonna give a bit text, install, and provide this app. So he runs, he asks, everything's for free. You can accept, it's a Vitex app, so don't worry. And now we're gonna go ahead and use our Vitex link again. So let's see if we get everything looking good here. So let's move to our link again. And we will see this error here. So this error means that there is still something wrong going on there. And um, if you get into this error, you will need to install another app that is called link. Uh, and it's called vitex.searchresolver. Oops, I wrote it wrong, I'm sorry. There was a typo here, so let's go ahead and try it again. Search resolver. Okay, now let's try it again. Okay, looking good here. Let's go ahead to our link. And here we are. Finally, we managed to have our design. So we already have some products um, registered in this account. As you can see here, the account is always this one here. And um, well, there is also the basic of everything here. So let's let's go quickly into the code and I want just to show you some important information here. Um, in our manifest.json right now, we, we are using the Vitex vendor and that's not the right way to go. So we actually used, we need to use our vendor like the name of our account here. That would be in that case, code by. So I want to use code by and I want to start the version from the zero, zero, one, okay. Um, and now it's also another very tricky thing, but every time we change some things here and I'm gonna give another link, look what is gonna happen. I'm gonna show you now, the text link. So he will link to this new manifest.json that I created here. And um, well, everything looks good, right? I mean, let's go ahead there, see if everything has changed. No, everything looks kind of good. But the problem is with this here. If you go to our terminal again and you give a Vitex list command, where you're gonna list all the apps you're using that we just installed here, and all the links, like all the codes that are linked to this workspace, you will see the first one here is the one that we just linked, and the second one is the one we linked before. So you shouldn't do that. Don't link with two different manifests. So we need now to unlink one of them, and we're gonna use the command of vitex unlink, vitex dot store t. So he's giving me an error that is very often you see as well. When he gives you this kind of information is because he's, he needs like the account, what you want to uninstall and also the version. So therefore we need to provide here also this information that's the version. Oh, I used the wrong version. <laughs> so let's try it again. Okay, now with text list, you will see, great. We're using only the one we want, the new one. So let's link it again. Let's see if anything has changed or we can keep working with it. Okay, looking good. And here also looking good. All right, guys. So this you have perfect, you have all the blocks here. Now you can basically change everything here. Um, the structure of the blocks, it's kind of like simple. If you wanna see the, the home one, we're gonna, we're gonna be working a home structure today. So 
you see everything that's here is actually uh, on our current home page. So besides, of course, the, the header that is here, everything below that we have blocks in our file. And in order to prove that, let's just go ahead and comment the first block. So if you comment the first block, what should happen? Our banner here, our main banner disappears. So it means everything is working fine. We are linking our, well, our code source with the workspace and we are ready to go. So this is the first setup that you need in order to start working. Um, what I'm going to teach you now are also, well, some details about what you need to understand in terms of these blocks there. And we're going to add two new important things to this code. So let's, let's take a look at these blocks here. Um, as you see, everything that's here is the same order that we have in our website. So we have our first list content image that we just saw is the banner. This is another block. I will explain in a second what is this, but moving ahead to this one, it's the flex layout row deals. That's basically this here. So if we, for example, change that one for this one, look what is going to happen in our website. This comes after that. So you want to stand there is an order also related to this order here. So just remember that this, um, this order is super important here in order to show everything on the website. Um, yeah. So another thing that is in this code here is this fold experiment layout lazy assets. And what happens to me very often is when I, I see some different blocks on the code source and sometimes I don't know what they mean. So I just Google it and you'll see that you learn a lot just doing that because there is a huge documentation from Vitex and sometimes you will see uh, exactly you'll find out exactly what you need. So uh, <laughs> in this one here, it's a very tricky things that actually Vitex designed for improving performance of your website. So as you know, Google is changing also the algorithm and uh, the speed of the websites will be one of the most important factors in order to be on top of the uh, results. So what this fold basically does, it's just telling, well, your, your block here is telling them, it's telling to render this website just until that point. And then after that, we will, you will, it will only be rendered after the user scroll, um, scrolls the, the web page. So for example, if we check that one here, um, the page will load only the carousel home. So it means it will be super fast. But after the user scrolls, he will actually load all these other blocks. And this is super important for, for the, S, well, the speed and in the end, of course, the SEO that you want to achieve. Um, and besides that, another thing here that you have to keep in mind, and everything is written here, guys, everything is written here. So this here, it's a very important factor. So Google will not be able to track content po position under the fold block for SEO purpose, since the components are load are only loaded with user scrolling. This means that if you have any content on your page that you, you are using like some keywords that helps you to um, well, to, to have a better ranking on Google, you have to put them on top of the fold, never below it, never below it. So if anything related to SEO content, just put on top of it. And, and yeah, so also here, another very important thing, just make sure that is added below blocks whose, whose components are interactive, such as the carousel. That's because the static loading provided by fold experimental laser sets block can be detrimental to the proper function of these interactive components negatively impact user experience. So what I do always, I always put under carousel and we know that it's an interactive content. So it will always work out. I've seen websites where we didn't use that. And I can tell you guys that this, well, performance went super down without it. So even if the customer complains, guys, we don't want to, we want to see everything together. Just tell them, listen, your performance is going to be compromised because of this. Um, 
Okay, so let's move back to the blog. So you understood what this fold experiment la lays a set does and try always to put it on your homepage, okay? Um, so other important factors here, well, these other blogs, they're very simple. You can understand them reading the documentation, but I'm not gonna move into that right now. Um, all right, so one thing that I want to show you when we're talking about Vitex, every time we're developing anything with Vitex, we have to think in a way that makes the usability of your client, your customer, whatever uh, you are dealing with, um, easy. So one of the new launches, I don't know how new is that, but it's the site editor of Vitex provides the user a possibility to work with the content as he wants. So I would just move to English that one. And here you will see, um, we're loading now our homepage. And as you can see, if you use the selector here, you can select all these elements. But one of the, well, most difficult parts during this process is if you want, sometimes you cannot really um, select the component, well, the block you want here because of X factor. But um, what I strongly recommend to you is to work with better naming here. So right now, I don't know exactly what all of them need, that what all of them are here. So we need to help the user to understand what is going on here. And by using a simple thing in your code, you will see how things can change for them. So let's give an example of this, well, this image list here. I tried to put in English, it went back. Let's try it again. It's not, well, it's not giving me this possibility, but no problem. Um, so as you can see here, we have a list of image list here. It's called right now the, the default name. And it's just like, it's what we want here to just set up everything in our homepage. But we want to be more specific in the code. We want to help the user again understand what is there. So in order to do that, we just give this title to block. And here we use this some easy title. So main banner, main banner. Uh, you can put whatever you want here. I'm using just for the purpose of the class main banner uh, block. And I'm going to save it. So let's see if something changes here. Reload the page. And here we will see now what is going to come. So you see, now it's easily recognizable what we want here. So the main banner is clearly this one. We have one that's called just row. Imagine that, what is a row? So this row actually is what is then there here uh, under the main banner. So you can give a name, you should give a title to all of your blocks. Don't forget about this. This is like super important for users. Oh my God, they get lost sometimes. This is complicated. So just try to do that. And I'm gonna also see uh, if we can improve something else. But yeah, for this purpose here, I will just, well, leave it for that way now because otherwise we'll get too long. But the next class, I will teach you how to work with Customize, not customize, but here we're gonna learn how to enable or disable blocks. Just leave them active or not. The user will be able to do that. And some other things we can do in this store team here. Right, see you next time.